working on Grotto. Uh, first, let's check on the, ah, yes. The build of the container was finished, thankfully. Let's up this thing and let's see. Uh, it's still not doing the thing. Why isn't it doing the thing? not doing the thing. no idea um, okay, nothing's running we up Tends to want to start. Let's look at our Docker compose file again and see what's going on. Okay, nothing special there. Um, welcome to the stream where I don't get nothing done because what the hell has even happened? Okay, I'm gonna try a different approach and see, I'm just gonna see if this works. Okay, well, this is something at least. It's giving me some freaking debug output. Okay, so if, if there's problems with the code, then uh, it might not, might not build right. So, of course, no problem. Let's fix the problems with the code. This should just be temporary anyway. I think it's over here. Sort that out. And, hey, okay, there we go. I like that better. And then let's do a migrate. So from last stream, I just copied out a couple useful commands and put them here in my to-do file, just so I can have them for later. Eventually, I'm going to make a make file where these commands can sort of be codified and, and made useful for everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. But for now, I'm just putting them there so I can grab them. All right, so this thing ran. Let's try bringing the container up. Still nothing. Hmm. Something's happening now. Oh, is what? What? Okay. I'm so very confused now. I guess it just runs slow. I guess it just runs slow. Oh well. Cool. Enter all he who enter here. So I don't like this because I haven't created a character. So 
that shouldn't appear for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> take note of that here. So I don't know quite what, it's not wired up to do anything special whenever you click create character. So I think this is just gonna run the thing that'll make a character for you. Uh, so that there's, I need to put something in the middle there to cause the test to be brought. Uh, but for now we can just go to the URL. So I think I put it there. I should get name character test is not defined. Cool, no problem. It's no problem. Oh, that's because I didn't do the import that I wanted to do there. So character, character test. Wow, and then delete the whole line. I cannot choose for an empty sequence. So it's wanting to choose um, here, there's no character test right now. So let's start there. Um, we're going to want to have access to this on the admin side of things. So let's just do it. Oh man, are none of these? Okay, usually I just copy pasta. Um, let's do a possible I like to look at the Django official documentation because it, it's thorough it's up to date it kind of has to be up to date um, everything else is kind of suspect because the, you know we're into to Django version 3 now and a lot of the answers are from way back here in the deprecated days and um, so I, I just like to read the docs directly because it uh, yeah because it's correct um, okay, so I want to, yeah, this is what I want to use. It's that little pattern that, that always sort of escapes me. Um, so I want to be able to do happening right here. I am very confused by that. So I'm not a super user. Uh, let's fix that. It needs a terminal, so I just need to put
so I want a TTY. Okay. And I want to be interactive. Oh, I guess I can't bundle up. I can't bundle up switches. All right. can bundle them up, you just can't bundle them up after the V. The V is for volumes. So I'm just going to say Paul 2. I think I already have, oh. Whew. Other Paul. Finally. <coughs> Damn it. Got it. Huzzah. That's my easy to type password that I like to use there. Can you tell how easy to type it is? It makes quite a clatter with this new cardboard box based tinting solution I'm trying out on my keyboard. Quite a clatter, I gotta say. The thock is way up on this setup. It's ugly as hell. It's literally a cardboard box sort of samurai chopped at a weird angle, two of them this way, and uh, yeah, little holes punched in it for the ergodox to sit in. If you check out my stream from yesterday, one of my streams from yesterday, you can see a, see a picture of it. Okay, let's see if this thing is going to do what we want it to do. Oh, hey, it's, it's okay. I don't know why the output looks so different today. But let's log in. Character tests. Looks good. I like what they did with the admin. This little thing on the side, the sidebar here, is uh, a welcome addition. So the question today is, let's just grab the one straight away because it's really great. Would you rather I imagine a lot of questions will start that way. Where the hell was I? Oh yeah, I was over here. Bam, would you rather? I'm gonna get rid of that opening quote. We can put that in systematically. So that's ugly and it's not useful moreover. So let's do a list display. I think that's what it is. Uh, and we should put the question to be a tuple and then we also need to have an inline for the answers so uh, is it just inlines I think it might just be inlines and I think we need to do a class character test Just do a stacked in line because I remember it. It might be a stacked model in line. Okay, god dang it. Okay, let's go over here to zeal and let's do stacked in line. Cool. I love it. So I've said it before and I'm going to say it again right now. Zeal is incredible. It takes the Django docs and just uh, gives you really easy search access across all of them. If you've ever tried to use the Django docs on the web on the, uh, the the official docs here, this search that they have up here is not. Man, it really leaves a lot to be desired, in my mind. Um, search over here is free. Um, zeal. It's pretty nice. Totally, uh, nobody's paying me to say that. So where was I? Right, stacked in line. I'm gonna spell class correctly. And I think I just need to do, well, where was it? I was here. I just need to say what model we're talking about. And that 
I think we'll do it. Well, it's going to be character test choice. I want to make sure that's correct right here. Character test choice. I like it. Can't you though? Did I misspell it? I misspell. Oh, misspelled it. Okay. Let's fix that real quick. I'm going to do a global find and oh, do a global find. I'm going to set a path here, add folder. Let's do all of Grotto. Yeah, that's the right way to do that. And we're going to replace that with character. character let's find them all oh I don't like that I don't want to change it there in migrations that uh, I mean we could change it I don't want to change it it's bad to change your migrations it's better to just I mean what I'll probably do actually is delete this migration after making this change and then rerun it because the database right now uh, should not be affected by that and I can roll back the database because the database is checked in uh, I, th I find it kind of controversial to check in the database but uh, it's checked in here so that gives me the ability to take it back in time so let's see about doing that um, hmm. okay so I'm just gonna delete this migration I'm gonna run us back in time by discarding all changes to the database. I'm going to do that find again. I'm gonna see some new stuff. What? I just deleted that migration, I thought. Where are you at? Oh, I did no such thing. Yes, delete that item. Goodbye. Um, it's just those two places where it needs to change, so I'll just do it manually. I'm not going to use the, the full on thing. So, character. Cool. That should fix it. Now, let's do another. Make migrations. This should recreate 004. We will redo a migrate. Puts them in place. And now we should, having put that admin in line in place, we should be able to go back here. Back here. Oh, yeah, we got to restart the damn thing. Docker compose up. premature there. I need to do a create super user. And I think other call was untaken. someone in chat yeah um embe embels embellus yeah 
Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name correctly, but yeah, it's a uh, um, it, Grotto is a it's a web web uh, based game using Django as the back end, and uh, it's it's brand new. It's um, I don't think there's a playable version of it anywhere yet, so I'm looking forward to the day when it can be up. But yeah, it's a simple um, it's a simple sort of maze type game where you are searching for your friends or searching for whomever in this maze. Imbel... Imbelis. Okay. Imbelis. Did I get that right? Cool. Um, so I was doing other Paul. And we got character tests here, and we Add a character test. Sweet. So now we get the whole thing, um, and we can. Would you rather? And I'll get rid of that starting quote one more time. And then the first choice we could pop in there would be. Well, welcome to the stream, Embellus. Uh, thanks for chatting with me, um, and hit me with any other questions that you think of. Um, right. So I'm. Yes, I'm trying to fill in a question. Make out with Ted Cruz, the grossest thing imaginable. And clean all the bathrooms in Grand Central Station with your tongue. The obvious choice between those two. And we save it. And uh, if we view it again, it should give us a few more choices that we could pop in there. So we are all set with that. now. Uh, the reason I wanted to create that in, was entirely so that if we went to the site and we logged in as a, a regular user type person, then um, we tried to view a test, that it would pull up a test, and it looks like it does. It's not formatted well, um, but it is a radio button, and if we answer it, it says that uh, we've, we've done what all we need to do. So I'm fairly content with that behavior. Um, it should be possible to test um, if it will ever re-roll, right? I set it up so that if you uh, rolled less than 12, that it would ask you another question. Um, Cool. So it looks like it did uh, do that. So maybe we should put a message up there um, that's like, uh, let me ask you another. Um, so we can deal with that in the context data. Um, here I specifically chose to, to just use the existing get method. Um, but uh, there's probably a different thing that we can do uh, that can make this a little bit more robust. So here I'm just going to grab this context line and grab this render line, and I'm going to add a different switch in here, um, another equals true. Want that to default to false, and then if there is another, um, then that can get passed straight through to the template. And then let's implement some change in the template to see that that gets um, to see that that gets created. Uh, that's not what I want to see. Where is it? It is not open. Create or character. So then here, um, if another, if another is true, is what that's implying, then um, be unsatisfied Chrome demands you answer another. Uh, 
this is an end if. Cool. So let's try running through this again. I'm just going to answer randomly. Okay, so it didn't roll higher than 12. And then I haven't actually made another, so it's not going to, I mean, it can't um, ask me any other question because that's the only question it knows. So let's fix up the, let's fix up the formatting a little bit here. Uh, let's try to make this a little bit, and you know, I'm not a, I don't, I don't do much in the way of layout stuff these days but that's putting breaks in there seems like it should be okay so we answer cool so finally I rolled higher than a 12 and it uh, sends me through so we're gonna need to stock this thing with a number of questions um, just to make sure and then hopefully people will create their own questions as well so we'll get plenty of good fodder for that. Um, so it's a little mini wizard thing here that it's going through where the questions and the answers really don't matter. So you could really just bop through. Um, in fact, I'll leave a little note up here to say possibly validate. gonna do a way to create um, test questions as well so um, before we do that I want to take a little aside here um, in the wireframe he Wiley has this uh, little panel down here for actions and I think I saw in the commit log that he had created actions for rooms. So let's check it out. So I see nothing here. Let's go into, ah, love it. Choice one, choice two, choice three, perfect. So let's see how he implemented that and possibly um, extend that a little bit. So in the room, HTML. It looks like he made a new file called actions.html. Actions.html. Beautiful. Um, hmm. I don't know if it's going to work out well for him this way. It's my understanding that when you do an include, um, you don't get any more, you don't, it, it doesn't pass any context to that. It just, it gives you the literal HTML that's there. Um, so what I, um, so I guess I'll talk with Wiley a little bit and, and sort out what what he's trying to do with these actions and maybe give him some advice on that um, the thing that immediately jumps out here is that he's not using the uh, base template and it's probably because he had no part in creating it so he doesn't he doesn't know to use it so here in character test and this is coming also from the guild guild.html which has all of the sort of, sort of boilerplate stuff here. So um, what I th think Wiley will want to do is to have a block here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, before the footer that'll have those actions. Um, but to literally do it um, in
to to not do it in, in, a, in a separate file, but to literally do it in, in the thing here. And then from that, let's just do some indentation stuff. Uh, from that, you can sort of programmatically use the choices. So you could do for action in actions, and then if your if your if your view defines actions, let's adjust for that. That gives us a little bit of an API for how actions might work. And then we'll think about how to get the actions themselves into the um, in into the, the context. So I'll pop that into base. So I'm gonna I just I hope I didn't step on his toes when doing that. Um, what I guess I ought to do if I'm trying to be helpful is to implement all of his templates such that they uh, um, extend base. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to bite the bullet here and make that happen. So if we take a look back at base, we get rid of most of this stuff. The title, um, the title we can retain. We're going to retain it as a block. So get that one. Title uh, rather block block page title. don't need the compress CSS tag that's already over there let's make sure nothing changed about that yeah nothing changed about that the close head tag is dealt with body class okay Let's do a body style as well over here. Hope that's not. Okay, so then we include header. We've got a div class main. We've got a block content. 
that's this. implemented anything over here about sidebar so let's do that next um, actually I take that back let's not do that here let's do <laughs> Let's finish out the rest of the page. We'll deal with that sidebar last. So that's stuff in the middle there is sort of at large. And then the actions are now built into base. So we don't need that footer likewise built into base. So that takes us to the end. Okay, so then sidebar. What's the deal with sidebar? Um, <clears throat> well, most pages don't need a sidebar, right? If we look at the, if we look here, we don't have a sidebar anywhere until we get into the rooms themselves. So that's telling me that they're a little bit special, a little bit, a little bit snowflakey there. Uh, so no, no big deal though. Um, it was just a little block up here. I'm just going to create a block. I'll call this block sidebar. Doesn't have anything in it. Doesn't need anything in it. It's just a little placeholder happy little placeholder and if we I want to put the diff view on we see what it had before it above it was div class main and below it was a section description so that's perfectly fine as is So what I want to avoid doing is <clears throat> I want to avoid putting anything in the sidebar right now um, because it, it's I just want it to be a placeholder. I don't want it to affect the page layout broadly. So as long as nothing is in there, it's fine. So it's it's a little bit it's a, a little strange perhaps uh, just because it has the, the markup for itself inside of the block. So I'm calling this block sidebar and then it has to also include the, the markup for sidebar. Um, that's a little non-conventional, but so be it. And then that finishes it out. So this is sort of an unasked for um, an unasked for um, refactor of his template. And so we'll see if he takes to it or not. I'll sort of, in, I'll warm him up on it a little bit and see if he, uh, if he's uh, game to go along. I'm just trying to make it more closely aligned with the, the Django way of handling templates. Um, thanks to a, um, some viewer feedback I recently learned about a package that's that's uh, proposes to change the way you deal with Django templates a little bit. It's called um, Django STL, SLT, maybe it's SLT. Um, I'll talk more about it as I learn more about it. So I have the blacker room. Oh God. 
body class appears more than once. Oh, yeah, it's because I didn't adjust it. Body stock. Cool. Okay, blacker room looks just like we hope it would look. India red room, it looks kind of green to me, but that's fine. Blacker, oh, that's where we just were. Robin's egg blue looks a little dark for Robin's egg blue. Cornflower blue, um, also a little dark. <clears throat> so none of these have any actions. Let's have a run at putting some actions in. And since, um, since this is where Wiley was working to demonstrate the concept, I'm going to go ahead and um, follow his lead and demonstrate that concept in the room itself. So looking at the room detail, um, I just want to, um, I'm just going to implement a class here. So Actually, I'm, it's, it's going to be a mix-in. It's going to be an action mix-in. Um, and it is doesn't need any inheritance. And actions can be set as a list of tuples. Uh, let's do a list of dicts. Uh, blah, 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 list of dicts. Yeah, that's fine for now. And the dicts are going to look like um, URL. sample here that hopefully Wiley can follow to see how actions um, come into be. And then um, whenever we hmm, I think the real way to do this is with a context processor. Um, have it sort of automatically generate the list of actions from attributes of the view. Let's see. Context processors. So it's going to take the request. Getting, there's more data there than what is found in the request, so it's not perfect. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to avoid it now um, and just do a So if this is in the chain here, action mix in. Actually, I think I can put it after. Uh, so then what I would say is that um, context.update actions will be like self actions. 
and then down here I should be able to say So having that in place, I think, should make actions come in. No? OK. Why didn't actions come in? Um, hmm. Oh, I think let's fix the uh, inheritance order here and see if that fixes things. Oof. Hey, there we go. Cool. So what I did there was um, the reason that that worked is that the the detail view here at the end of the um, uh, method resolution order I think it's called is it's going to terminate this get context data and it's not going to call super right I, I think if we go to uh, class based views we can see that. Let's, this one. If we get all the way to the bottom of get context data, yeah, it's not, it's not doing that. It's not. Uh, um, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, it's it's not calling super, right? So it sort of terminates that chain of uh, uh, of calling super, and so putting it before means that as it as it goes from the local like this class's uh, implementation of get context data up through the MRO that it hits action vixen before it gets to the end. And if we omit actions here, we should see it do we should see it do the demo action. Right. So that inheritance should work fine. What I want to do is take this action mix in and move it to a different place though. I want to put it into the project app views. So it'll be here. And that, that makes it sort of more easily accessible for the rest of the project. So from grotto dot views import action mix in. Let's leave a little documentation from here. Let's not leave a documentation prompt because I don't even know what to say about it. Um, puts puts action details on bottom of template. Fine, it's good enough. Um, and then we'll uncomment this. And Wiley can have at that whenever he checks out this code. Um, Now that we have the action mix in, I can use it in my view over here somewhere. Where'd it go? Must be on the other on the other uh, screen. Yeah, view is character builder. So I'm gonna steal that line. Actually, let me test before I go looking too far. Yeah, we're back to real action. I love it. So I'm going to steal this line. I'm going to take it back over here. Uh, take it back 
over here. Index. Let's see what all has actions. Um, so the character view has actions. This has okay. So basically everywhere has an action. Let's put them in the guild here. So for index. Mixin for character view. Oh, Jesus, we're going to do action mixin. Action mixin. Cool. Now, for this, I'm going to say actions equal. Um, oh, boy, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Say before I say what the text is. So text is going to be um, create. No, that's not right. It's down here. Take a different test or create test. Take a different test. Let's do this the same way as before. This URL that we're going to be pointing to should look like uh, reverse. Um, oh, that's actually probably not reliable up there like that. So um, that might be something useful to build in over here and get context data to check and see if this is a, a something that's reversible or if it's an actual uh, rather this is something that's reversible versus a, um, a proper URL. But for now, I'm just going to give the proper URL, say guild, and I don't remember what it is, of course. So let's pull up the URLs.py. Where? Man. There it is. It's going to look like guild write test. This is going to look like guild test. And then hopefully, if we go there, guild test, this site can't be reached, obviously. Oh, still that. That again. Thanks. Action mix in, and this is what is this going to be? This is going to be a. I think it's a create view. Yeah, create view. Let's look at that. Um, no, 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 no. No, 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 that's not that's not what I wanted. I want to do a form view. Yeah, and I'm going to make a form class here to deal with this thing. Uh, what was I copying? Not enough, I'll tell you that much. Generic form view, OK, so you can just go up there. Probably going to complain that I don't have a form class, obviously. Ah, oh, no, there we go. 
Um, and we have the thing down here, and it looks great. It actually doesn't, it looks fine. It's not the same as what we expected it to be. Whenever I click here, it does indeed refresh this page. And if I click there, none type is not callable because I didn't uh, give it a form class. Yeah, it's trying to get form. Okay, so let's give it a form class. Let's do the thing. Um, <clears throat> actually, let's go to class base view, uh, CC, CCBV, and let's make sure that that's the name. Form class, indeed. Form class. Um, and this is going to be our character test form. That doesn't exist. Not a problem. I'm gonna make it right here. Wait, is there already a forms? I need a sip of water. Okay, so yeah, we can create that form right here. And I'll move it to another module. I think I should be using forms.form probably. And then up here, I think I want to do from Django import forms. Possibly. Let's go check that in Zeal. Forms. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Um, and then uh, poop. Uh, so same deal as. So whenever we made the model, we were certain to use this foreign key relationship so that we can have as many choices for a given question as we might care to have. Um, so doing something similar having um, multiple answers, or rather having a, yeah, being able to say sort of without knowing in advance how many answers to a question there might be, um, what this form looks like is, is a little troublesome. So there's something, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Zeal might be helpful here. Um, what is it? Um, field set. Field set. No, that's model admin. That's not it at all. Um, factory. Model form, uh, form set factory. So instead of deform, we might be able to use the form set. Layer of abstraction, we're going to form on the same page, especially with the data grid. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it's not perfect. Yeah, it's not perfect. Um, what I would rather have is a field 
in the form be able to take in as many copies of itself as it wants to. So, um, let's, how can I, oh god, that's not what I want to click on. How can I search for this? what we're talking about where they're going to say make a foreign key um, and then is there a way to then okay nobody gives any advice about the form so what happened here oh okay moderator elections uh, form fields maybe this will be useful too This is the generic API for the fields themselves. Multiple choice field could be interesting. Let's look at it. No, that's not going to be what we want at all. Fields which handle relationships. Okay. Um, let's see what this has. Yeah, I'm kind of sensitive to this form being ugly. I don't want it to be a hideous looking form. So, um, and I'd love to be able to exploit Django's um, built in handling of forms. And I don't want to make it something stupid like separate your answer choices by a comma. Which would work, but it would mean that like you couldn't use commas in your quest in your answers. Um, oh god. We have another uh, another bot trying to get me to buy followers. No man, I don't want to buy any followers. Good god. Um, hmm. Well, I don't like that there isn't a good choice for that. Okay, it's not a problem to do a little script, a little jQuery script to allow fields to be added and then it's not a big deal to have fields separated dynamically Ooh, that could get fun let's check out multi-value field I have a feeling this might get us close to what we want Hmm. Okay. It doesn't do exactly what we want. But it does give us some breadcrumbs that help us that 
help us out a little bit. So a multi-value field, it um, it does this. Uh, um, it, hmm. Let's follow the example if we can. Let's get rid of this. It's not useful. Um, yeah, whenever you're defining a multi-value field, you define the various fields in it, and it's going to. Um, it's going to sort of mash those things together um, in the actual data structure of the f of the, the post data, um, and it's going to so this compressed thing. It's going to take the list of valid values and return a compressed version of those values. So you are going to define how those values get squashed together, and um, there's a there's a, another end of it where you have to, and this is what you would do in the widget. In the widget, you have to define the other side of that. You have to do the decompress where you split it apart. So we're not going to bother with the widget. We're going to sort of replicate the widget ourselves on the front end. And and here. Yeah, I'm not going to use the multi-value field because that's it's too rigid for what I want. I don't have a set number of fields that are going in there. It's dynamic, but I do want to give the user, you know, as many different text boxes as they want to enter their question. And then we'll combine that up and unpack it over here. So I might not even Um, yeah, I think I will actually. Oh man, it's going to be so subject to breakage though. Hmm. No, no, no. I think I can do it. I think I can do it here. Um, <laughs> hmm. I'm kind of thinking that I actually don't want to do this in form. Because Django forms are kind of they're kind of a bear. Like if you have a if you have a really straightforward form, then they're easy. But if you have anything that's off nominal about your form, then it just becomes really problematic. Um, <clears throat> so let's go back to a template view for now. We'll just implement our own post function here. Um, the template doesn't have to be anything special. I think I already created the file. Yeah. So, uh, template, blah, template name, character test create.html. And the 
get function doesn't need anything special at all. The post function though, so get post self request args args um, so in here we need to take in the request data proc print and then here let's do Mr. B, what do you have? Oh, do you have a booch? Do you have some kombucha for Dada? Oh, thank you, little B. Oh, look at that. Do you want to have some? <laughs> yeah, he likes booch. The boy likes kombucha. Yes. I'm going to pause programming for a sweet moment with my son. Oh, that's pretty good. You want to try some? Yeah, there you go. There you go. What do you think? It's a little bit different from the one we're used to. It's a little bit different. Sweeter. It's got. It's more minty. It doesn't have the same. Uh, doesn't have the same tang to it that the K tonic has. But it's still delicious kombucha. <coughs> yes, it is still delicious kombucha. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on this and put it back over here. Thank you for bringing that to me, Mr. B. Okay, so we've got our question here. Let's put a label as well for question. What is your question? Excuse me. Um, so hopefully that works. And then um, I have to do some to do some BS down here to make
Okay, so that gives us a rough sketch of things. If we go over here, let's go back in as a normal user. Uh, let's see if it makes me log in. It does. Nothing happens on the demo actions, but that's fine. Let's go to test. And then let's go to create a test. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, so that's fine. Doesn't have that. Uh, so what does it have? Hi, love. Okay, um, so it's complaining because it doesn't like this this print right here because that's not a real thing. Everybody knows that's not a real thing except for me. So I actually, I, I haven't spent any time at all thinking about what this thing actually is. So let's do it. It's not in there. What are you talking about? probably because it's coming from somewhere outside of Django. Um, okay, that's not useful. Let's hope that it conforms to HTTP request, at least in part. Um, might see something in here useful. Okay. What's post got? Dictionary like object containing all given post parameters. Query dict documentate. Okay. Okay. So that might be what we're looking for. Let's see what's in there. Post. Uh, I gotta fix that. That's terrible. Each one of them gets a oh god! Each one of them gets a break. Much better. So then, okay. So it didn't freak out on me. It also didn't write anything. What the crap? You posted. Why didn't you write it? Well, I don't like that. Oh, Mr. B, are you kicking around? Are you kicking around your your stuffed animal? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I, I don't love that it didn't write that.
Okay, so it did it that time. What is going on? What? Okay. Is there some lag in the logs coming through? No, doesn't seem like it. This time it didn't do works. So that's definitely not what I typed in this time. I typed one, two, three for the question. It works this time. So I am flummoxed. Um. This is so weird. Okay, well in any case, it gives me a framework to work in here. I can separate the questions from the answers, and I can create instances to, um, to work with each. Post is a query dict, and it has just regular fields in there for question and answer. So let's look at the documentation again. And it was going to give us some warning about the query documentation below. trying to say here right I'm just gonna start pulling the things out I'll do some validation in the way um, so question some validation here um, um, actually I'm gonna go review how validation works 
in a regular class-based view because I'm pretty sure I should be able to raise validation error and oh no I guess that's if I'm doing a normal a normal thing so since I'm on my own here um, I'll just create a data structure errors <coughs> choices they start from zero um, so let's let's just do a little while loop Right here is where I wish I had that um, lawless operator because it makes the instantiation of this while loop much easier. So, um, if I was using that, I would say uh, while um, answer text. Defined as rather um, request.post get answer hyphen answer ex In order to deal with this, I'm going to actually just do answer text. Just do this definition here. And then again down here. Um, and I might be able to do this a little bit snazzier. So if I do answers equals the list, then here I could conceivably do answer uh, uh, then answers minus or rather plus one. think that'll work. It's going to naturally run out and that should be fine. So then we can do some validation here if len answers plus than
we do that? What happens there? I kind of want to see. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bop all this off real quick, and we're gonna see what this thing actually looks like. It's fine. Just does whatever the hell it wants, huh? Okay, I'm gonna hit save over here. Oh, there we go. I don't have to do any separation bullcrap, it just pulled them all together. What happens if I leave an empty one? Nothing. Okay, fine. Um, so then if errors, then <clears throat> let's clean that up a little bit. If there's errors, I want to send this thing in. give a different status code. Wait, do I have a need to do I do most of my programming as an API programmer, so status codes matter a lot. Um, um, I want to do something with my errors here, so if errors... Just displaying those errors a little bit more elegantly. Okay, so now if I come back here and I don't enter a question and I only get one answer choice, it should tell me about it. Tell me about it, come on. Why didn't you tell me? So I, I 
it said very specifically. If it is none, so let's do this. Um, I don't know the question exists. That's good enough for now. Um, now, if it makes it past this, uh, actually, if there's errors, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, if there's no errors, then we can create all instances. <coughs> so, yeah, we can create the model instances. Sorry. I just uh, muted to sneeze. Forgive me while I recover from that sneeze for a moment. And I'm back. So we're gonna if if we pass for validation, we're gonna create the model instances. Here, uh, that's going to look like. Um, um, do we have access to the to the models? The models character character test character test choice. Just send them back to the test page. So we'll redirect them to uh, redirect them to kill the test. So with this, I can say. Um, Jump. 
Dang. Redirect. What? You. Dude. That is not cool. I'm guessing it comes from here. Redirect. After I wrote all that. <laughs> Something weird happened. <clears throat> That's fun. Okay, so let's check out what happened over here. <laughs> Just delete those. And try to understand what the fuck just happened. Sorry, I shouldn't curse. What the heck just happened? Um. Is it that answers? Hmm. Let's look back at those logs. And let's look back at that documentation. And we're back. Um, so I was trying to check out. Aha. Uh -huh. This is the same logic as get. So get item here is going to return a value for the given key. If the key has more than one value, it returns the last value. So how do I get items? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we want kit list. That should do better for us. So we get the list. do this a little bit different answers equals because it's not guaranteed to return a list it, like it said in the docs it returns an empty list if the key doesn't exist and default is none wait what it's guaranteed to return a list unless the default value provided isn't a list Okay. Oh, okay, so this default. So if I provide a scale, so then 
is it into this? The key doesn't exist. Okay. So it does work that way. So it's fine for that to be in here. I was worried that this might not return a list, in which case it would cause an exception because of that comprehension there. But scratch the itch. So let's give it a try. Let's create a test. And we can do, uh, what is your question? Uh, something important. Looks away. Shuffles feet. Hems. And haws. All right, that looks better. Oh man, I'm getting low rolls. I love it. Cool. Um, so that seems to work. So I'm going to call that good. I think that works fine. So character tests x implement. Uh, let's do this next. This is sort of a real bug. Build the hall shows characters I didn't create. So. Let's go back to the guild hall. I don't have any er any characters created for me. Um, Fud is the only character here, and it's created by Wiley. So, why do I see it? Because the guild is not set up well. <clears throat> In our context data, um, we are because this is a list view. We're just grabbing. Um, we're just grabbing the, the full list of all the characters and displaying it. Um, what we need to do is to limit that query set a little bit. So let's implement the get query set self uh, prove. I can't remember what that has here. Let's see. Classy class base views to the rescue. doesn't accept any arguments. So the the default qu get query set is pretty good. I mean, it, it's it's actually really great. That's why it's there in the first place. Uh, so I'm going to start with a call to super to get query set. And from there, I want to limit the query set to only um, to only those characters who are owned by the current user. So if I do query set dot filter, I should be able to say user equals request dot user, but I don't actually have requests, so I use self dot request dot user. And then we return query set. So hopefully now, come on, hopefully now, let's make sure of something. Yeah, that should work. Why, why are you not working? Okay, is this another? Is this another get freaky situation? Okay, let's look at list view a little bit more. We are doing get. Uh, first, it starts with dispatch. Uh, that just calls get. So get goes here, says. Object list is get query set. Okay, get query set is what we were just looking at. Okay. 
Yeah, seems to be what ought to be happening there. Did I misspell it? Get the query set. I don't think I misspelled it. Doing that, it's not a great example to follow, but I want okay, it's definitely saying test now. Why is it still doing that though? I'm a dingus. Query sets don't act in place. They return query sets. So I need to do that. No characters yet. Cool. That's what I expect to see. So these are the sorts of things you run into with query sets. Don't need all those tests. Um, okay. So that's looking pretty good. visits so that when a character visits a room actually no let's wire this thing in a little bit better so that whenever you click create character it uh, oh god hmm. uh, so that when you click create character it bops you through to that um, character test Jesus. Sorry. Every once in a while, a cable gets jostled around on my desk, and I get this uh, large bout of noise in my headphones. It's really annoying, but it happens like four times a day. So maybe I need to work on that. Anywho, what was I thinking about? Uh, right, I was going to uh, uh, set it up so that whenever you check that button, it takes you to the character test and again this is all being wired up really simply um, so I'm just really gonna make it a link so whenever you are a guild and you click create character it's gonna take you to the I need this to be a form anymore because it's just a link. Oh boy, character test. 
not bound. Um, should be. Yeah, should be. Oh, no, it shouldn't be. Builds character, son. Cool, so create character. Takes me to a test. I make out with Ted Cruz. I shuffle my feet. Crone says, what's going on with you? Um, down here, I want this to look different. After a successful roll, I want to have this uh, look like a... Um, look like this. We can view your character. So let's set that up. Um, So to do that, we want to uh, implement an action for that. The de default actions for this character test view. But nothing in the rules says we can't change that. So if we just do self.actions equals uh, the text can New character can have it can like redirect to um, to the character detail page. So with that, uh, cool view character is what that says, and that takes us to a nothing page. So then. For redirecting, I want to just create a character, just cause a character to be created. So, pattern name. Who's pattern name? Let's look at get redirect URL. If self URL, pattern name. Okay, so pattern name. something um, 
here's where I'm gonna actually actually create the character and associate the user. And then I'm gonna update quarns to say that PK which is the URL quarn that we see here, the URL parameter that we see there. Set that to the new character. .pk. So, um, so yeah, that should do the trick. Um, let's do the actual creation of the character here. I think generate character should just do what we need it to do. Hopefully it's returning the character. Um, I think I need to fix up the usage a little bit. Uh, I think a lot needs to happen. Generate character is not being imported. Let's find that. It should be in character generator. So from That's not gonna do it right. Um, okay, I like where his head was at though. He followed the same pattern as, as he used in uh, the room generator. But this is a much more complicated uh, thing here. So we're just gonna adjust this generate character a little bit and we're going to do a self dot. stuff um, I don't think he needs that at all but I'm gonna leave that alone um, character name skills has oh okay skills is just a char field okay I might update that character type I'm guessing that's kind character description. Okay, so this is pretty easy. Um, the skills are quite simple right now. But I'm guessing he doesn't want them to be char fields like that. How is it creating these skills? Get skills. Okay, I'm gonna fix that up a little bit so it's a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna give it some skills. Um, and we can move forward with that. So down here, uh, I've got character. Oh boy, we've got. Oh boy, that's not right. I don't want that there. 
We don't want character as well because that's over overriding. So we'll just import models from character from character builder. We'll import models, and then that lets us do models dot character objects dot create. <coughs> to have some more stuff here, seed. Uh, let's do keyword arguments here instead. Let's say user. a seed I I'm gonna change that seed in when I'm generating the character. I want to pass in the seed whenever I'm instantiating the character object. Since that's being used broadly, I'd rather it be dealt with there. Um, and then here, if a seed is not given, I'm going to uh, generate one. So rand end between one, zero rather, and big number. So that gives us a lot of possible choices in there. Um, the I think I could get rid of all these other random seeds down here, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'll leave it alone. Okay, so we've sort of cleaned that up a little bit. I'm going to clean up where we call it next. Uh, where do we call it next? We call it here next. So seed uh, gets past none. That just gives it a random seed. Here we could use the answers to the questions to generate a seed that might be a little bit more repeatable, but we don't necessarily want somebody to get the same characters because they answered all the questions the same way. Um, we want some randomness in the mix. Anywho, um, we will pass in the user here. So user equals request dot user. That should tell us about the character should get created, should get passed through. Um, whenever we go to view the character, I want to, um, I kind of want to make sure, uh, maybe not. I was going to say I want to make sure that like that's my character so that whenever I view my character sheet, I see the details that are mine and everybody else sees the public details. Um, we can deal with that differently. So I'm getting, I think I'm happy 
Oh, no, not happy. There's still a lot to do here. Um, char ID, I don't think you need. I'm just going to leave that alone. Character name is going to be self.name. So the thing I want to do next is to think about how skills work. Um, the skills are going to be word and then um, number sort of things here. So right now they're dealt with a little inelegantly um, in that they're a char field. So I'm going to bump that and I'm going to say instead that we have here called skills <coughs> rather skill model of model and then this is going to be um, the skill proper which is a um, it's a char field but um, that appear in skills. There's a lot of them. Problem 15, problem 16. Medieval weapon skills. 23 is the longest one in here. So um, what if we just call this max length 50, gives us some room to grow. And then here is our um, think there's any bound necessarily on the level the, the random choice that he gives between negative 10 and 18 but that's uh, you know obviously you gotta have some room to grow so I'm not gonna put any bounds on that skill I do want to say though that um, that this is not gonna be a super well normalized table um, because you know obviously the skill itself could have its own table and then you'd have like a character skill mapping type of thing going on. But I don't want to go crazy on uh, getting this thing set up. So I'm just going to deal with the, with the non-normalized thing right here and say that the um, um, and say that the that this is just linked to the user or to the character. Character skills goes away, skills goes away. Um, active, I'll leave it because I don't know what it is. Um, default equals to
up. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, I think that does what we need it to do. And I, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't think it needs to be there at all. While I'm at it, I'm just going to get rid of all of these things. And uh, oh, God, type. Cleaning that up a little bit. Um, I'll clean this up similarly. And then that should become kind. Okay, let's fix up these skills here. Instead of appending that, we'll do an update. So skills dot update. Um, poo. So now for um, skill self dot skills. Let's get skills. Skills should be returning the so this is all uh, Wiley's code that I'm working from as a starting point here. Um, so skills we want to be addict instead of that. Okay. <coughs> Yeah. 
think this will work a little bit better. So then let's do for the for the, uh, self dot skills dot items. Um, I want to create the skill. So models dot uh, skill dot objects dot create uh, main equals skill. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon that uh, sudden coughing spell there. Um, the thing that the logs are complaining about is that little typo right there. And now it will probably work a little bit better, but we can't actually use it yet because we need to do a make migrations. <clears throat> Bump. So it doesn't like it because it has bad syntax somewhere in this thing. So we saw that earlier. It's down here at the bottom. It's this, this kind of random thing down here. It would have worked fine if it had uh, commas but it wouldn't because there's a return outside of the scope of a... Of a did this um, character creation in a dedicated function, a dedicated method for that up here. So... I think we'll get a little further now. Let's hope. Redirect view is not defined, no problem. In here, it's got to figure out where redirect view actually lives. It's in generic, so I can just put it here, and then we'll see what it complains about next. Excuse me. Boop, boop, boop. Did you rename here to description? Oh, okay. So it wants a uh, it wants an interactive terminal to do this. Some of it was wrong. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So now that we have that, we can do the migrate. And after we migrate, Everything ought to work fine. We can up this thing. <laughs> and we should be able to get ourselves a new care. Oh, blah. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, do we? So we didn't create a URL for that. So let's make a path and let's call it um, new character. Oh my, it's calling me. Spam risk later. New character. I call that? Let's see. Views, I called it the 
new character view. So that's that's going to be trouble. Um, yeah, we've got double character here. So I'm going to import character as excuse me, character generator. And I'm going to update the usage down here. Getting closer. No such file or directory word lists first names. So um, that would be because we got this thing tucked away further. Um, so let's do a Necessarily think they're all in word lists. There's some corpus things in here. Um, yeah, text corpus. Um, where did text corpus go? Oh, they all got bonked. Okay, they should be here. Animal corpus. Okay, so there's some possible duplication there. Bird name. Okay, so I'm starting to see we've got some overlap. So, <clears throat> some of these are text corpus, some of these are word lists. Shouldn't be a problem. Any of the io.open, if I just put the prefix on there, then we ought to be fine. Let's do it. I'm not using pathlib or anything like that. Again, if it was my project, I probably would just because I'd make it a little bit easier to work on long term, but um, given this is somebody, you know, who is, you know, not, he's not angling to become a Python developer, do it the simple way to um, help not make it into an unreadable mess for him. Okay, so this gets us a little closer. Uh, so I have a character now. Uh, it looks like I've created a character at least. I don't see a name anywhere. Ah, uh, I see. The stuff got messed up because I changed the attribute names. So let's go find the template for the character itself. Find that through URLs, character view, character detail view, 
character detail view uses character dot html character dot html okay and that's in grotto i'm going to put that in a better spot oh it's using the old template let's update that as well uh, so i'm going to save you to not grotto i'm going to save you to So let's try giving this thing the same treatment that we gave to room.html earlier and making this thing work from the base template. I'm just going to make it totally unrecognizable to Wiley. are meaningless now the character though damn that's gone gone this should all just be content So you should look a little bit better now. Okay, that's not actually the thing I was trying to fix. Let's do you instead. <coughs> Thay. Okay, it still doesn't show me nothing. Okay, so I don't have an object, I think is the problem here. So what's the deal? Let's look at the view. Character detail view, we got character query pk and slug true. So it is not looking at the new template. I'm gonna bop you away, I'm gonna delete the old template. because of the way templates inherit. What, what, hang on. Yeah, that's what I don't want. I want you to go away. Yes, delete. Close without saving. Don't need that empty directory either. Hope that's not still in use. Is this the only place where room is? HTML. Looks like it. Okay, so I can move that to Map Builder later. No sweat. No sweat. 
There we go. Love it. Um, okay, so that's looking great now. We have um, we got this thing. It's not exactly what we want. Oh, hi, Simon Baker. So here we do four skill. Wooliness minus six. Holy shit. I'm clean shaven. Peacefulness 14. Seems good. Playfulness 11. Cleanliness. Cleanness 13. That's that's kind of a stretch. But I like what is happening here. I like it a lot. So let's um, let's see what is wrong with it. Look at our character view page. Okay, so we should have two. Um, we should have two <coughs> actions available here. Um, actually, I want to make that three. Right, I want to well, give a dedicated delete. Um, but definitely a return to guild hall. So the actions need to come next. So character.html is good. Character generator seems fine. Um, Base.html seems fine. Guild, we're going to be going back there in a minute. Um, don't need these anymore. Oh god. Do you want that though? Okay. We'll clean up this indentation a touch. Um, Doctor Compose don't need you. Actions, you don't are you aren't needed at all anymore. I would pause it. Uh, getting ready to use another another task for another day. Um, let's just not fuck around right now with. can do that way better than I can. Um, don't need you. Don't need you. Well, uh, let's actually reopen you. Let's load this a little bit. Okay, that's better. Now, where was I looking? I was looking over here and I wanted to give actions to this character page. So character detail view. Actions I want here. They should look like uh, return to grotto. would be 
new care uh, Q. test just test just test <coughs> hmm. Based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like the character should know its location, which is totally doable, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So actually it might be might be the right time to holy geez have I already been going for two hours and 45 minutes it's a long long session we got going on here um, I think instead of attacking a new um, aspect of the uh, game today I'm just gonna go ahead and call this stream good and tomorrow or maybe next day I can do visits um, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and call this stream finished for now and um, thanks for tuning in as always uh, make sure you smash that follow button um, and uh, if you like what you see then uh, let me know and I'll keep doing it Okay, have a good day. Take care of yourselves. See you next time.